I often get asked questions about how to best study for the radiation therapy exam. I wanted to talk to you today about one strategy in particular that I use in order to study and to ensure that I have confidence in material, something that I didn't use when I was a student, but I've sort of started to develop in the time that I've been an educator. And I think by using this strategy, you'll do exceptionally well on the ARRT registry exam in radiation therapy or in any other board exam that you have to um, take. I wanna start by going to a particular document that's put out by the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, and that's called the content specification. If you've been in school for radiation therapy for almost two years, you've probably seen this document before. If you do, don't already have access to this document, you can simply go into the Google search and look for ARRT content specifications, radiation therapy exam, and it will pull up this PDF. I wanna start by encouraging you to read through the entire document. The first part that I want to stop on in particular is the content category section. The content categories are going to help you budget your time for studying, which is a limited resource. By looking at the different sections that contribute to the total 200 questions within the exam, I can tell where I need to spend most of my effort. So out of the total 200 questions, 104 total questions are going to be on the procedure section. The procedures are broken down into treatment sites and tumors, treatment volume localization, prescription and dose calculation, and treatments. Between those four areas, that makes up about half of the overall exam. The second section is the safety section. The safety section is composed of radiation physics, equipment and quality assurance procedures, and radiation protection. That's going to account for about a quarter of the questions on the overall registry. And finally, the patient care section is made up of patient interactions and patient and medical record management. That's going to account for about a quarter of the questions on the overall exam. I wanna scroll down and show you the strategy that I use most common, commonly to ensure that I have confidence in a particular um, subject matter area. And that's to write exam questions on that material. I'm gonna focus on section two of patient care, patient and medical record management. When I look under the outline here, I can see that the first section is called evaluation. And under evaluation is the epidemiology and etiology, cancer risk, prevalence and incidence, screening symptoms, history and physical exam, imaging studies, lab and diagnostic studies, such as surgical and pathology reports. I'm gonna focus first on this evaluation section. Under evaluation, epidemiology, and etiology, I would like to write a question that's going to speak to some of the terminology and some of the risk factors for specific types of cancer. I've already started writing questions on a separate document. It's important as you make these documents that you give some indication to yourself of where this is coming from so that when you're going back to study from them or perhaps you and a classmate are going to share um, your questions and try to answer them to quiz each other, um, you'll know what section it came from. So PC2 is the section of the registry that, this is, that these questions are related to. So the first question that I wrote was about risk factors for a specific type of cancer. If you go back to the content specs, you can see cancer risk factors as a section. So the first thing I'm thinking of is what are some risk factors for specific types of cancer? The most common cancers I already know are prostate cancer, breast cancer, and lung cancer. So I'm going to write a question about lung cancer. My question is, what is the primary risk factor for cancers of the lung? I know from going to school and from all the reading that I've done that smoking, is the main cause for all cancers of the lung, especially the most common types, being non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. But I need some other options here. What other options might appear on an exam trying to determine if you understood the risk factors for lung cancer? How about asbestos exposure? I know from reading that asbestos exposure is related to a very specific type of cancer of the lung, mesothelioma. 
That being said, mesotheliomas only account for a very small number of cancers that arise in the lung. So that is a good um, that is a good distractor cancer because it is a type of um, lung cancer, although it's not the most prevalent one. I'm also putting other distractors that I think might trip uh, myself or somebody else up on the exam if I was in a high um, pressure situation. Family history, I know, accounts for somewhere in the, the ballpark of 3 to 10% of all cancers across the board, some cancers more commonly than others. So I think family history is a good distractor, and so is sun exposure. Sun exposure is the single biggest cause of, of cancers that arise in the skin, although it really has nothing to do with cancers arising in the lung. So this is the first cancer that I've written, and the correct answer for this question is going to be smoking. My second question talks about another part of the same evaluation section, which is the prevalence and incidence of cancer. So when I think about prevalence and incidence of cancer, all of those terms that come to mind are um, um, epidemiology, etiology, prevalence, incidence, incidence rate, mortality rate. Do you know the difference between all of those terms? This question is going to try to determine whether or not you do know the difference between that. So the question is, which of the following describes the prevalence of cancer? I have several different options down below. All new cancer cases of a particular type that have been diagnosed in a time period of one year. So I know that that describes a specific type of terminology related to cancer incidence, incidences. When I break it down, and I look at the time period of one year and the fact that they're all new cancer cases, I know that that means incidence. So that's not the correct answer. My second option is the total number of patients who have died of a particular type of cancer over a time period per 100,000 population. I always know that when we're talking about rates of things, whether it's a mortality rate or um, an incidence rate, that that's going to be per 100,000 population. Since we're asking for the prevalence of cancer, I know that that's not the answer, but it is a good distractor. The third option is the total number of individuals who is affected by a disease, including newly diagnosed cases. So when I think about cancer terminology, I often think back to a picture that I've seen um, before of a bathtub. And the bathtub is draining at the same time that water is being poured into it. And then there's a residual vo volume within the tub. The residual volume within the tub is all of those individuals who have ever been diagnosed with cancer um, and are still alive. The drain is those who have died of cancer. And the water coming out of the spout is all of those new cases um, that are happening per time period of the year. So all of those total number of individuals affected by a disease, including the newly diagnosed cases, would be the prevalence of cancer, making C the correct answer. My final distractor is basically going to be the definition of the word um, etiology. So etiology is the risk factors of disease. The risk factors associated with, a, with contracting a particular disease. Um, would be a good definition for um, for etiology, but it would not be the prevalence of cancer. I hope this exercise has helped you. Maybe we'll try to do one together just so that you get the sense of, of where all of this is coming from since I um, took the liberty of doing the other two questions before. Let's look at signs and symptoms. Let's start by thinking about what the difference is between a sign and a symptom. If you recall back from learning about signs and symptoms, a sign is something that is demonstrable to people outside of the patient, whereas a symptom is something that the patient feels that other people from the outside would not be able to, to see um, exhibited. For example, a fever would be a sign of illness. Um, a headache would be a symptom. 
let's write a question about signs and symptoms. Okay, so I've decided to write this following question. Nausea is which of the following? The first option is a sign of cancer arising in the rectum. When I think back to the signs and symptoms of rectal carcinoma, I think about things such as bleeding, maybe a painful mass, and pencil thin stools. Nausea is not a common sign of cancer arising in the rectum. Not only that, Nausea is thought of as a symptom. Vomiting is something that can be demonstrated from the outside, but nausea is something that just the patient experiences, making a sign of cancer arising in the rectum a bad um, answer. The second option is a symptom of radiation therapy to the abdomen. A symptom is something that can only be noticed by the patient from the inside. Radiation therapy of the, to the abdomen has several different um, signs and symptoms that might be uh, related to uh, having radiation in that region. Some of those symptoms are nausea and vomiting. So this is a really good option so far, but let's read through the last two just to make sure there's not a better option here. Clinical presentation of metastatic disease. When I think about um, metastatic disease, I think about the fact that often these patients are experiencing pain if they have disease in their bones. I also think about um, overall symptoms such as uh, weight loss or um, fatigue. I don't think that's a very good option. A poor prognostic sign is the last option. Um, when I think about prognostic signs, we're thinking about things that are going to make the patient fare worse than something else. It doesn't really address nausea at all. And when I think about poor prognostic signs, I'm usually thinking about types of cancer um, in terms of pathology um, or burden of disease within the body. So nausea in and of itself has nothing to do with patient prognosis. I think the best answer here is B. If you think this exercise is helpful, I encourage you to try to do this yourself using the content specifications as your guide. And I also, encourage you to do this maybe along with a friend. You write questions that you think are relevant to the content. Um, they write questions they think are relevant to the content and you answer each other's questions. That way you can see what other people are finding important about these particular um, areas as well. I really hope that this has been beneficial to you in your study for the registry and I wish you well in the rest of your time and, um, and on your exam.